All right, what's going on guys? So I learned something critical, okay? When I was reading the wiki for setting up this board using cool term in options, you see where I had CTS checked. Well, there's also one that says X on. Well, if you look in your settings, CTS is checked. All right. So I was actually configured to read X on on uh, the flow. Let me show you here. Flow control. Right here where it says flow control. It was not set to CTS. It is set to CTS now. Second problem. Um, this tiny G will control four motors. X, Y, Z, A, B, C, whatever you want it to be. Well, I mapped X is one, two, Y, and three was Z, but on four, I left it at the default. So it was also Z. So I remapped motor four to another axis, all right? So now I've got all the motors working correctly. Now the working as far as they're turning and going, uh, they're moving when I give a command. However, I need to make them move a specific amount. Well, this is where your motor uh, travel per revolution. If you have pulleys and belts, it changes the gearing and the amount of distance it will travel per revolution. If you just have lead screws only, like this one here, is lead screws only, lead screw only, and lead screw only. Well, these lead screws are eight threads per inch, and this one is some weird spiral thing. Looks almost like a ball screw. And I don't know how a clue how to figure it out by measuring it, okay? So what I did was this is I tried to find something that I could send a command 13 millimeters equals 0.511. So I set up a dial indicator, okay, on the spindle, on the z-axis. So if I send a command, I could increase or decrease the, uh, you see here, travel per revolution, 60 millimeter. Okay, that's my Z axis, which is three. So if we come down here and send the command to this guy here, so we'll say G1, we'll give it a feed rate of 200, and we're gonna go Z minus 13 millimeters. So we're gonna send it in the Z. Now, the next thing I have to do is map X, Y, and Z positive directions. Okay, so we'll just enter there, and you can see that it's traveling raising up and there's a little dial and then there's the big dial so what I wanted to be at was five which is a half an inch and I wanted to be 511 I'm at 510 now I'm off a little bit here so I can change and add it like 60 millimeter point one 60 millimeter point two whatever I need to do to get it to be exact but you know, my uh, dial indicator really isn't the most accurate tool ever, okay? But when I do a cut test, you know, I can measure the distance and make adjustments. So that's good news. I've got my Z-axis really close. However, you'll notice that when I put in a negative command, it traveled up. There's something called the right hand rule, okay? If you put your right hand up like this, Okay, it's going to give you your X, Y, and Z, and in the direction that's positive. So, Z pointing up, Z positive. So, if I give it a positive, it should travel this way. If I give it a negative, it should travel down. Okay, on the X axis, okay, which is this axis, if I give a positive number, it should go that way, a negative number should go that way. Okay, and my Y, okay, it should go positive that way and negative that way. So, 
if I would give it a positive command, it is going this way on my Y axis and I give a negative, it goes that way. So that one's right. However, this one's backwards and this one's backwards. So all I have to do is change the polarity of that motor. Let me show you right here in the motor setups. See where it says M1 polarity? It's in reverse right now. I just need to make it normal. Motor two, polarity. I need to make it zero, normal. So um, that was an easy fix there. Then I need to set up and measure the actual distances for, I'll use my dial indicator so that, you know, I get a half inch with 13 millimeters and close to a half inch for 13 millimeters in both directions. Get everything set up that way. And then we will be set to start doing testing on um, fine tuning. Then will be limit switches. Uh, this is an old engraving machine. It uses this motor and this pulley to pick up the uh, RPMs. So I think this is like eight or 9,000 RPMs. But with this pulley, it makes it a lot faster. It uses a little belt. It turns the spindle and cutters drop in. Let's see if I got a cutter I can show you which I'm gonna to have to change this whole head. Uh, oh, come on. There we go. So these cutters, they're carbide. They drop in and there's diamond drags. Again, this was for doing routing and engraving. So, you know, you can make some signs and stuff like this, but I wanna be able to cut out carbon fiber plate. So I don't know a way that I can get, say like a one or two millimeter carbide single or dual flute cutter that will thread in here, all right? Um, but I do have options. I could pull this all out, use these four bolt holes to make a new Z-axis shaft and do something. You know, it's just a little desktop CNC machine that's built in the 80s that's gonna get redone. My limit switches, they are in place. Um, However, with the limit switches, let's see if there's another limit switch right there. And the other limit switch is over here. I guess they need shielded cabling to do limit switches. And uh, I guess you can home your machine using soft limits. And soft limits basically divine how far of a axis you have to travel and it will only let it go that. So you mechanically put it into an area and then it will travel out and travel back to zero without using limit switches. So I guess the limit switches, they're good for like homing things uh, and, you know, working for machine homes. However, you know, there's two different types of coordinate systems. There's the machine coordinate system and then there's the program coordinate system where so for example if i wanted to put like three little vices on here and engrave or cut on three different vices i could make an offset as g54 g55 and g56 and run that same code at three different places or i can break out an offset and control say this line here i can make g54 this line G55 and this one G56 and G57. And I could have full control over each line where it cuts. It just depends on how you want to use your offsets, stuff like that. But uh, anyways, we're getting closer. And my whole holdup so far was the stupid CTS, the flow control. That flow control setting, I did set it right in cool term, which is this terminal that lets you set up your board and send uh, uh, some g-code out to test and things like that i'm sure you could send a whole bunch of g-code but you know there's no good interface there's no gui for like jogging or anything like that it's just a terminal mainly for programming and testing as far as i'm concerned but the flow control sends you know data back and forth to the board in between that board and your you know your uh, motors and stuff so it's got to have information going the right way, back and forth. But I didn't have it set that way, and that was giving me a lot of problem. So we are definitely making progress, and thank you, Mr. McGrath, 
or pointing it out. I did this a long time ago with uh, an aux CNC and it was a lot easier to do because maybe because I was younger. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, this one's really been kind of frustrating for me. I understand machining and I understand G codes and I understand offsets and you know, once a machine's working, I can go through and make programs and edit them and do whatever I want to do by hand. Uh, but getting this doggone set up was really had me scratching my head. And it was all to the flow control. So people, just because you have it set up in cool term doesn't mean you have it set up in your parameters. And I should have caught that because that was pretty stupid. Anyways, we'll talk to you later. Thanks.